Good Wednesday morning to you. Good to see everybody this morning when you're up and around early. Gosh, we have a little bit of sun peeking out now, but Lisa said there was some frost, a little frost on the grass this morning. So it's Iowa, I guess, spring in Iowa. And we wanted spring, so we have it. But uh, looking forward to a little bit warmer weather and consistent. So, but we'll get there. So for now, we are in Psalm 124, and uh, it goes like this. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat. What if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord, who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken, and we are free. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So this was an interesting psalm as I read a little bit of the background on it. Um, again, it's written by David, so we kind of have a time frame there. Uh, it could have been uh, as after some captivity, uh, obviously from either the Assyrians or the Babylonians. Uh, he's referencing that from the past. Um, he could be referencing... Uh, the, the surrounding nations when they were trying to rebuild uh, Jerusalem and the temple in Ezra and Nehemiah. People were against them and trying to get them stopped. Um, <clears throat> one, even, one commentator even went clear back to um, Moses leading the people away from Pharaoh. And so the whole point of this psalm, even though it's very short, it's by David, and it's a reminder to the people, regardless of their situations and regardless of what's going on right then and there, to look to the past and see how God has always been there for them, always prevailed for them. He's always uh, saved them, got them out of their, their trouble. And so... Uh, a referencing to references to the water here on several different verses. Um, certainly, uh, God had led the people uh, through Moses out of Egypt and away from Pharaoh to the Red Sea, and yet, had God not intervened, uh, the people would have been destroyed, either by drowning or through the killing of Pharaoh's soldiers. But the water didn't get them. The anger of the enemy didn't get them. Um, <clears throat> we can look at um, Israel's history and we would reference, in fact, that, well, uh, the Babylonians did take over Israel at one point and make them slaves. And then Assyria defeated Babylon and the Babylonians and took over the people and made them slaves. And the one thing that we need to remember there is that nobody took over Israel except for God allowing it to happen. Remember those times <clears throat> in the Old Testament were when the people had been disobedient in their sin. And so in their sin, God was punishing them. There was a discipline there. And God would use the enemy nations to carry out that discipline. But when the discipline was over, uh, both the Babylonians and the Assyrians, and in fact the Romans later on, even in Jesus, they were, they were overthrown. They were gone. Um, Israel still exists today. The history, <clears throat> the history that David wants his people to, to remember is a history of protection and um, provision from God. So whatever it is that they're going through right now, uh, 
they can look back and see God's faithfulness to them. He references in verse 6, Praise the Lord we did, who did not let them let their teeth tear us apart. Um, using the reference of like an animal. Um, I didn't realize it, but there's all kinds of references, I guess, in Jewish literature and even in scripture to, to lions. And uh, they were well aware of, of, um, of animals that could tear them apart. Uh, and he uses that metaphor, the enemy tear them apart. But no, that didn't happen again. God protected them. He says, we escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken, and we are free. So, when the punishment of God's people was over, when the discipline was over, there was no, no doubt. No one could keep Israel as a captive people or as slaves. They were set free by God. And the reference for you and I today in here would be, again, looking back over our own lives. What have we come through? What are some of the problems and situations that, <clears throat> that we made it through? It was, it was maybe hard. It was difficult. But we're still, we're still standing here today. Uh, God was faithful and, and worked us through those situations. And the trap... I thought it was interesting how one person put the trap was our own existence in a way. From the very beginning, God told Adam and Eve, he gave them everything. It was a perfect world. Just said, don't eat from this one tree. If you do, you die. And they walked into the trap. And the trap was set. And we all have been victims of that trap. We've walked into it ourselves by our own sin, which has separated us from God and, and entrapped us in death. And yet that trap has been broken. And we haven't just escaped from the trap, we've been set free from the trap by Jesus. Again, his death on the cross, his his resurrection from the ground, from the grave. He's alive. He's victorious. And we who believe are too. The trap is broken. We're, we're free. And so it's exciting when we, <clears throat> when we think about that. And we look back again, like I say, over the things that we've come through. And certainly this situation of being separated from God... God set us free. We didn't have to work. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to pick the lock. We didn't have to figure out how to escape. God set us free with Jesus. And so we, along with David, can say, our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Uh, we serve a mighty God, a big God, a God who cares for us, who loves us, and who protects us and provides us. He will discipline and punish when necessary, but it's corrective. It's not, it's not, I'm so angry with you, you're gone. It, it's a corrective discipline to bring us back. Always reconciliation is God's goal. And so we thank him for that this morning in Jesus. So let's pray and give thanks to God. So Father, we again thank you with David for bringing us through um, many of the situations in our lives, many of the turmoils that we've been in, the problems that we've had, the situations. And uh, we're sitting here this morning. Uh, we're listening to your word and reading along with your word. And we're here. You have protected us. You've provided for us. And so help us to, to keep that in mind as we go into today and the days that follow as struggles greet us and, and problems find us that um, 
we don't have to do this alone. That you are with us and you will again walk us through those situations. Doesn't mean it will always be easy. Doesn't mean those situations will turn out exactly the way we want them to. But we thank you for your help, O oh God, who makes heaven and earth. You are in charge. You have the plan. And we will trust you as we move forward in this day and the days that follow. In Jesus' name, amen. So thanks for joining us this morning. Good to see you, Clara and Todd. Hi. And uh, Gail and Steve and Elaine. Um, thanks for jumping in, in this morning to see, uh, yeah, just to join me. Quick, it was quick this morning, a short one. But guys, I hope you have a great day and uh, enjoy the weather wherever you are. And uh, again, remember, you're walking with God today. Regardless of the situation, he's with you. So we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.